Hello, everyone, and welcome to, good morning, I should say. Welcome to another edition of Live Artist Talks. My name is Joy Davis. I am the manager of adult and community programs here at the Walters Art Museum. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Alejandro Martinez, who is a local art um, entrepreneur, art maker, cultural ambassador. Uh, I want to I wanted to uh, welcome Alejandra to the program and we're gonna share some images of your work um, and start with some questions. So I just wanna welcome you Alejandra here um, to the program. We can start by, Hello. hi, welcome. Thank you. Can we start with some images for uh, of her work? Oh, wonderful. Hi, hi, hi. So let's start with my first question okay. here. What are some of your favorite Dia de los Muertos traditions? There's a little hint here for our audience, uh, but I wondered if you could speak more to that. Well, Dia de los Muertos, uh, uh, first of all, it's it's more like a, a day to remember our loved ones. So for me, my favorite celebration oh. is to prepare everything and to share the things that I know, that I like the memories that I have uh, of my childhood with my kids and with others. That's wonderful. And you can see here some examples of your work with um, uh, many different groups around the sugar skull um, that you present and do workshops for the Walters Art Museum. Um, one thing I forgot at the top of the program is to plug that we have many other uh, possibilities for you to plug in to programs for Dia de los Muertos if you go to the walters.org uh, slash events or just the walters.org and you can participate. Um, I think that we've had a really great reception of your Sugar Skull workshops uh, throughout the years uh, when we've done Dia de los Muertos. And I just um, wanted to, to send you over those kudos and just like how much um, I think of an impression it makes on audiences and especially families. I think, yes, in, uh, go ahead. Actu actually, the first year that I attend to Walters was doing uh, the Pan de Muerto. Uh, and and showing and talking to people about the Pan de Muerto. And then from there, I start doing the Sugar Skulls workshop. Well, that's wonderful. You really did, you really did kind of grow um, your work uh, through that process. Yes, yes. That's how I, I started because I, I remember that my grandmother used to teach me how to do the uh, the workshop or how to actually do the altar. For us, it's not like a, it's not like a, I don't know, craft day. It's, it's, it's something that we used to do, you know. Use every year we know we have to do the ofrenda. So mm -hmm. uh, the sugar skulls were, were my favorite part with my grandmother. And I'm, I'm curious from you, um, you mentioned your grandmother and I know in prepping for this, we actually talked a lot about your memories of, of Dia, um, of Dia de los Muertos. And I was wondering if you could share more of those memories either with your grandmother or with your family uh, or even introducing the festival to your kids. Yes, uh, well, my grandmother passed away like 10 years ago, but everything mm -hmm. that I do, like I remember it in honor to her because she was the one that always teaching me things about, or telling me stories about Dia de los Muertos. And right now, at this time, I love to teach my kids like what I used to remember to do with my grandmother. Some things are hard to find in here that, you know, there are things that you find really easy in Mexico. But um, that's what I tried to start making the sugar skulls myself because they were so hard to find them. Mm -hmm. So I 
try to remember what I, I used to know and what they teach us as kids. And that's how I start making the sugar skulls and the pan de muerto. That's so interesting how your memory actually helped you to fill a need that you had. Uh, and then just bringing it back to our festival at the Walters, you were able to share that with so many, so many others. Um, and I'm curious, how, how did you introduce the holiday or the observance of the holiday with your kids? Was it through art making? Was it through cooking? It's like I say, when, when, when you are a Mexican, <laughs> I think you don't, you don't really think that you are teaching them something. Like, it's, it's like an everyday thing. Like, I know, like, every day I cook for them, and my daughter see me cooking for her. And uh, my husband is from a different country, and, and he loves when I'm making bread for him, when I make tamales. And it's not something that I, I am, I have the purpose of teaching her, but she sees me really often in the kitchen and enjoying doing the things that I, like I love to bake for them. And that's something that, you know, gives me the stress out. <laughs> and, you know, it really helps. So that's something that she sees and that she wants to keep doing with me. She loves to bake with me and she loves to do the sugar scalds with me too. Well, that's wonderful. I also, you know, I think you hit on something really important there and that is that I think for, for many cultures that, or families that have rich cultures, um, it's it's intuitive. It's not just about hitting a, like celebrating a specific holiday. It's not just a particular food, right? It's like really embedded in how you uh, live every day. Um, which I think is, is really important um, to, to bring up. And so I'm curious. Yes, it's, it's basically not for not forget about your roots, where you come from, because it might be a little bit easier to get some more fancy things in here or to be able to buy food outside, like uh, on the restaurant every day. But it's not it's not good for them to forget that they they can learn to cook and they can learn to cook food that is, has been made for years and years, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I'm curious, you know, just to switch gears a bit, I wanted to ask you as a maker, right? Because you, um, we're seeing examples here, but we actually have some other examples um, of your work. And as a maker, how are you staying creative at this time, especially around the holiday, but just um, as we're in the pandemic and generally speaking, right, it's becoming fall. Um, how are you staying creative right now? It has been a little bit hard because, you know, I, I'm used to do a lot of events, especially around this time, a lot of workshops of Sugar Skull, San de Muerto, and attend to different markets but right now that everything is canceled i'm trying to be positive and think that i have to you know keep working and keep searching for new things to do and maybe make a lot of the things that i do and when it will be the time i will be the you know i will have enough materials to work with <laughs> so yeah. yeah, just trying to keep positive and not lose the hope that everything is going to be okay and and hopefully my business is going to be okay too. And I, you know, in, in preparation for this, I think one thing that you said that is interesting to me is that you've actually been inspired to do new ideas and new um, other projects, new um, artworks. Um, and, and think think about your work in, in different ways because of the time that you have. And I don't know if you want to share some of that or um, kind of your process in creating new ideas. Uh, well, I sometimes I don't really, I don't really know what to do or if it should I keep doing what I'm doing. But um, I have often friends and family that keep pushing me and telling me to keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, been doing this interview, like it, it gives me hope too, 
that what I'm doing is something good and it's working. And so I'm just, like I said, trying to keep positive and keep thinking and, and remembering all the things that we used to do back in my country. Mm. I talk to my mom often and see uh, what they are doing. And sometimes maybe just out of that talk with my mother, she makes me remember something that we used to do and a new idea comes up. <laughs> That's wonderful. I mean, in a way, you are kind of um, creating an archive for your family as well to kind of gather all of that information and use it so that, you know, it can continue to be practiced and used, um, which I think is great. And so, you know, some people are familiar, as we've mentioned multiple times, you've done really great workshops with us at the Walters. Um, and people may be familiar with your work with uh, groups like um, Artesanas Mexicanas, but now you're a little bit more independent. And also, I think um, you've, you've discussed in the past your work with uh, sculptors as well. And so I was curious, what other mediums do you like to work in? We do have some um, of your wearable work here, but I was curious mm -hmm. if there were some other, some other, uh, mediums you like to work in or people you like to work with? Uh. Uh, like I say, I, I'm very fortunate that I have been working with different people. And I also work uh, with the cooking, Mexican cooking. So I have teach before Mexican cooking and I have supported some other um, artists on their workshops by doing the catering and uh, I have been uh, working with them with, I don't know, maybe uh, preparing or organizing some of the events to for other artists to sell their craft. So thankfully I have the support. I have been very supportive by Creative Alliance and by Walters uh, and by friends that, uh, they are artists and entrepreneur artists and each other we try to keep pushing each other you know to to keep the business yeah yeah i love i love the idea of um that you've created a network of, of artists to keep pushing each other i hope that you know um at this time that's helpful you can kind of lean on that group um we do have some really great links for our audience to check out if you can see it on the screen now uh you are very active on both your instagram and you have your own website and so for folks to go share uh purchase and support your work and follow your work um is i think would be a huge help but also just to support some really great community work that you continually do that i think is just embedded in your spirit which is just um which is just great. And I'm, I'm curious now, whether it's the pandemic or prior to the pandemic, um, how did you balance your creative practice and motherhood? Um, well, I would say that initially I started doing this for my kids to, to let them know that uh, the things that we used to do back in Mexico. And um, it's, it's, my purpose was to teaching them about all these beautiful things. And I never thought this will become a business. So I, I still making a lot of crafts and a lot of things with them. So I try to, to, to involve them so they don't feel like mommy is working. <laughs> but uh, I also have uh, the, the support of my husband and when it was time to go to work, go to different classes or events, he was the one staying with the kids. So I'm so blessed with that. It really seems like you have full support for your work, which I think makes it uh, a little bit easier to do, maybe, um, and, and allows you to kind of expand your mind a little bit. Um, it's also really heartfelt to know that you want to bring them in on the journey and make them be a part of the process. Um, and in a few of the other artist talks that we've had, artists with children have talked about that and including them in some way in the process. Maybe they aren't painting along, but they're included in the room. Uh, you know, they 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 are part of the process in some way. And so I, I just find that really endearing, um, thinking about how to include, making your children feel included, but also including them in the process. 
Yeah, my, my daughter is my number one fan, and she's always talking about me and how I started my business with with her classmates and teachers. So she's she's my bigger helper. <laughs> workshops and bringing your work to the community what motivates you to share your culture with kind of the world or with just a wider audience basically telling people that i this is not a uh, custom this is not a um, just one day celebration this is the way the we live this is the way that we uh, do things in Mexico. It's it's a tradition. It 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 comes from love. To remember the loved ones. To remember a recipe. To remember um, how they used to live their lives. And that's that's basically what I'm trying to do. To make people to remember. To make them remember their loved ones and where they come from and don't forget them. That's wonderful. Um, one thing that struck me in preparation is you said everything has history um, and kind of everything has reverence. And um, you shared how you were proud to share the real meanings, right? Beyond kind of the surface or uh, commercialized version of, of those meanings and, and share it with a wider audience to educate them. Um, and I'm, and I'm stereotyping, stereotyping. That's another, you know, really strong thing because some people might think that every Mexican use a hat and use uh, uh, sombreros, I don't know. <laughs> some some things that uh, things have been changing in Mexico is has the modern part too now and now they might adopt some uh, holidays like Halloween or something like it's in another country more strong but I hope my my people remember to where we come from and don't forget those traditions. Absolutely. Um, and my my last question, and then we'll take some questions and comments from the audience, is what is a takeaway for folks watching today about Dia de los, about the Dia de los Muertos celebration um, that you you would like to impart or tell them. Like, like I said before, don't forget where you come from. Don't forget your roots, uh, where your grandmother used to cook, what, uh, what your mother used to do for you. So don't forget them. They, if, if you forget them, your kids will never know or they will never meet, even, even if they are already passed away. If you talk to them about their grandparents, they will know where, who they were. So. It's, it's the best thing that I will say. Like, don't forget your people and teach your kids about where you came from. That's wonderful. So we can start taking questions from the audience. Um, if you're on YouTube or Facebook, feel free to uh, ask a question. Um, I'm going to share a few Edwin Perez. Uh, my students have wonderful memories learning about Dia de los Muertos from Alejandra. She is a wonderful educator and has shared so much about her culture with our youth. So I thought we would share that um, and sending us a lot of well wishes in the comments. Thank you. I, like I say, I have been very fortunate to know people that have always supported me. And Mr. Edwin is one of the biggest person that I know that is always pushing me to do better. That's wonderful. Um, we don't seem to have any more uh, comments, so we'll close up here. I just want to thank Alejandra for being here and sharing her story and her traditions with us um, over the years and also through this talk. Uh, I want to thank our digital team. Without this, it would not happen. You wouldn't see our smiling faces here. And of course, I want to thank our sponsor, PMC, for their support for the Dia de los Muertos celebrations this year. So again, I want to plug to check out Dia de los Muertos uh, related programs and any programs at the Walters.org.
And also you can check out on thewalters.org. On the second tab down, if you just scroll down just a little bit, you will see our digital community altar, art making for families, as well as wonderful live talks that we had today. So thank you again, Alejandra. Thank you again to our audience. Thank you. We will see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Goodbye.